first of all, John Mateer continues to amaze me. And he amazes me because he's only had four starts. And the guy runs the ball well, throws the ball well. And think about this. There has to be at least, I would say, over 100 years of Washington State football. And no quarterback has ever thrown for 300 yards plus and rushed for 100 yards in the same game in the history of Walsh's State University quarterbacks. Welcome to Pac-12 After Dark. I am Eric Coleman with Coach Nick Aliotti. Uh, Coach, it was an amazing weekend for the Pac. Oregon State just got done taking care of business and bouncing back after defeating Purdue 38-21. to Coach, what did you think about Oregon State's performance and the way they bounced back from last week? Well, I'll tell you what. They, they, were, they continue to run the rock. I mean, they did a great job running the ball. Again, uh, like I always say, we don't have the stats in front of us right away because we go right after the show, but they, they rushed for over 300 yards. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, both Griffin and Hankerson did a nice job running the ball. And then McCoy got involved in the run game. Now, they weren't there weren't many passes in that game. I don't think either team threw for 100 yards. But both teams rushed the, the ball well. But going back to Oregon State, Oregon State at halftime saw a chink in the armor. They started to motion to know whether it was man or zone coverage. And they really took advantage of that, not only running with Hankerson and Griffin, but on some speed options, which are really very good against man free. And also with some fly sweeps or jet sweeps, whatever you want to call it. So uh, I was impressed with Oregon State again, rushing the ball. Now they also did not stop the run as well as they've been stopping the run because they gave up almost 300 yards rushing. So I'm sure that's something Trent Bray take the win, but that's the thing he'll focus on, especially because he's a defensive guy. Yeah, coach. It was, it was kind of like a, a bittersweet situation for Oregon state on defense. They held, um, well, they held Purdue to 56 yards passing, but they gave up around over 260 yards on the ground. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it was a, it was a good bounce back. Uh, and coach, I want to I want to go back to what you were saying about them going back and uh, Morgan State going back into halftime and seeing something with that Purdue defense, coach. Because I, you know, I'm a safety. You're a defensive coordinator. I noticed that the Purdue safety was about lining up about 25 yards deep, and every time they saw him in the box, they I, I bet they looked at the looked at the footage and said, whenever he comes into the box, they're playing some type of man to man defense, and they kept doing that jet motion. And got around the corner. They knew that corner was trailing. He didn't have an opportunity to catch up. So that was a great, uh, great, great thing for Oregon State to pick up on, and it really paid dividends. But I mean, the running game was was phenomenal. Uh, Jam Griffin, you know, had 100. I want to say over 100 yards rushing. He was 137, Eric. To be uh, and coach, did you see him stiff arm that corner, put his hand in his chest, and drive that corner to the ground? That was impressive. It was, you know. Uh, Oregon State's recipe is, is like I said, run the ball, ball control, control the clock, stop the run. Now, they did most of that. They got some turnovers. They just didn't stop the run. And, and I'm going to come back to that man free, not that anybody really cares what I think. But on that jet sweep, you have to spin that with your safety. Your safety yeah. has to go down and take that guy. The corner goes back and plays middle hat, middle deep middle. You, you just got to spin that thing. And then you're in front of that fly sweep because we used to face that all the time with Oregon State Mike Rowley. Anyway, I have all the answers now that I'm sitting over here. But uh, <laughs> I had a few back then, too. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, I know you had, you had a lot of the answers. And, uh, and, and you know, I thought, I thought that was a big thing, Coach. We used to always – we called it rocking and rolling. You rock and roll the safety so that you have that outside leverage and you can, you know, play that from outside in. But um, – Coach, now I want to get back over to last night's action, Washington State at home against San Jose State in an absolute barn burner. Uh, John Mateer, well, was, uh, you know, he was 
a top performer again. 390 yards in the air, uh, 111 yards on the ground. Washington State went back and forth, scored 22 points in the fourth quarter to force overtime, and they ended up winning in, in double overtime. Coach, what was what were your impressions on that game uh, from start to finish with Washington State? Well, my first impression was I lost a lot of sleep, okay, because – Laywood. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the old guy didn't step till midnight, but I was going to watch every snap of that. But my overall impression was, first of all, John Mateer continues to amaze me. And he amazes me because he's only had four starts. And the guy runs the ball well, throws the ball well. And think about this. There has to be at least, I would say, over 100 years of Washington State football. And no quarterback has ever thrown for 300 yards plus and rushed for 100 yards in the same game in the history of Walsh's State University quarterbacks. So wow, I did not I did not know that, Coach. Yeah, Mateer, and Mateer did that last night. And uh, what a game it was. You know, I knew we talked on, on Wednesday with Nigel and I on the – Nick and Nigel about San Jose State's a good football team. They're pesky. You know, they always get some guys that are athletes. And I knew that would be a tough game. But Washington State came from behind, hung in there, tied that thing up, got it to overtime, and won the football game in what was a fantastic football game to watch. Absolutely. I mean, and you, and you, Coach, you got to give San Jose State their credit. You know, they, they put up a lot of points. Emmett Brown uh, threw for 375 yards. So, um, San, San Jose State, you know, is a formidable opponent. They were three and zero coming into this matchup, and uh, and Washington State was resilient. They forced a couple of turnovers late. Uh, you know, it was it was just a, a great team victory for Washington State. These last two weeks, they have put the fans through the ringer uh, with these with these bar with these nail biters. Well, well, make sure you guys stay with us. When we come back, we have some more college football for you. So make sure you stay locked in to Pac-12 After Dark. Welcome to Pac-12 After Dark. I am Eric Coleman with Coach Nick Aliotti, Washington State at home against San Jose State. It, it was just amazing to see them win one of those kind of games, you know, to yeah, come back, to show and, the and toughness. I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, go ahead, go. That's an example of you got to show up every week. You know, if you and I sat here and said, hey, Apple Cup or San Jose State, what's going to be the tougher game? Well, is it going to be tougher to play in Seattle against your, your rival or San Jose State at home? And it's amazing because going back, Washington State completely, I thought, controlled Washington in the Apple Cup. They were they were winning that game. They they were in control. Last night they weren't in control against a team that we would say on paper that they're much better than. It. So you got to be ready to play every weekend. You got to be ready to play. And another thing I, I have to mention is how about this pain kid running the ball last night? He hasn't played much. Metters, I think I'm saying it right. The tight end. Making mm -hmm. getting two touchdown catches, uh, other guys just showed up. But when it's all said and done, John Mateer is absolutely been phenomenal in in his first four starts, and I and, and I think that's a, a whole different team without him. And then and then I'm getting long winded here because I'm old. Old people get long winded. <laughs> and the other thing is, how about Cam Moore is at Miami, and John Mateer and Brown were backups at Washington State, and now they're playing against each other, or they were playing against each other last night. Pretty cool. <laughs> that, that's a great story, and, and, and a huge uh, credit to Washington State's coaching staff and, and their um, their job at evaluating quarterbacks. You know, they know how to pick a good quarterback. So, um, shout out to Jake Dickard and his staff. And coach talking about John Mateer, you're not hearing a lot about him nationally. Is he a Heisman candidate? And if not, at what point do you start inserting him into that conversation about winning the Heisman Trophy? 
Well, it's unfortunate sometimes that we start talking about, not you, that people kind of try to anoint people for the Heisman too early mm-hmm. instead of letting the play season play out. And there's some front runners always going in. Well, how could there be a front runner? Because it's only on paper before the season starts. They have to play to win the Heisman. So I'm answering your question this way. Absolutely. If Mateer continues to do what he's doing, absolutely. He's in the Heisman conversation. And I, that's just not blowing smoke because we're Pac-12 and it's Washington State and Oregon State. I'm a realist. Absolutely, this young man, if he continues to do what he's doing with his legs and throwing the ball and Washington State continues to win, he'll definitely be in the conversation. Yeah, Coach. You know, when I watch Mateer, it's, it's very rare that you find a quarterback who has the arm strength and the accuracy, but along with the, the breakaway speed. I mean, when you watch him tuck the ball, he's making some moves and, you know, jumping from one from one side, bouncing to the other, making nice cuts, accelerating out of his cuts. He runs like a true running back when he tucks the ball. But you better watch out. Don't come up too early because he has his eyes downfield and he throws accurate on the run. He, he knows how to read defenses, and he'll pick you apart from the pocket. So just a true dual threat, a great student of the game, and I'm, I'm happy for his success so far in this season. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have to defend him because because he can hurt you with his legs. And you're exactly right, Eric. You know, he's not just a straight-line runner. He can make you miss. He's tough. He can take a hit, spin off it, break it, and get going. And the two-point conversion last night is a great example. I mean, he runs to that pylon and gets that thing in there uh, for the two points to eventually win that football game. So, uh, Mateer, I, I mean, I, I could go on and on about Mateer. To me, he's he's the surprise to me of the 2024 season in college football because he's a virtual unknown, but not anymore. Yeah, they're, they're starting to prepare for, for number 10. And, and Coach... You know, we talk about the double overtime win by Washington State. As a coach, what does this do to your team when you win one of these games where you come back after fighting so much adversity, you come back, force overtime, go into another overtime and win one of these thrillers? What does that do for for the attitude, for the aura of your team? I think the way they had to come back and then to fight through overtime, it really, I think, boosts you up build your confidence so much and then it brings you closer and closer together and the closer you get together as a team and the more confidence you as a, have as a team you know you know some teams expect to lose when it's close right oh here we go again <laughs> you know what i'm saying eric yeah here we go again well when you do pull those off like washington state did last night come from behind and then win the double overtime, you say, hey, we can get this thing done. And it, it, and if I'm not – I think I'm correct in this. I think Washington State has won their last four overtime games uh, that they've played in throughout the years. But it builds your confidence tremendously. And it was a great football game, great win for Washington State. They just made me stay up too late. <laughs> yeah, they definitely have had me up late, and I'm on East Coast time, so it, it was extra late. But, uh, you know, for me as a player, Coach, when you win these games, uh, when you come back and, and win in, in this dramatic fashion, you start to believe that this is this season is going somewhere. And I think that for those players, they're starting to understand that, that this could be a special year if they continue to stay on task, stay focused, and handle their business. Uh, they can end the season with, you know, double-digit wins, so – um, hopefully Washington State stays healthy. Oregon State did a great job in, in their matchup. Look forward to doing it again next week as we break down hopefully some more Pac-12 victories. So uh, for, for Coach Nick Aliotti, I'm Eric Coleman. Thank you for watching Pac-12 After Dark. We'll see you next week.